In this video, I want to talk about tolerances and how they're used in the design of a part um, and how we show them on a drawing. So here I have a little U-shaped part and a little block that goes into it. You can see that, the, that it's got some dimensions on it. Um, so it should fit together, right? Um, so if I look at the part, if I slide it down, they fit together. But if we look at the drawing again, all these dimensions, they have a tolerance. So here in the title block, it's giving us a plus or minus 0 0.02 because it's two decimal places. So this could really be 0.48 to 0.52. Um, and the same thing with this one, this could be 0.48 to 0.52. So with those in mind, what it really looks like is, um, where is it? There you go. Got some visibility turned on for these. And you can see it, it overlaps the edge of the part by O2 and it sticks out O2. So now as we bring, bring them down, it can overlap and it can overlap pretty significantly. So if both of these parts are made to their maximum size, it wouldn't fit together anymore. If they're both made to the minimum size, so if this piece here was made to this line and this piece was made to this line, it'd fit fine. But if this one was made all the way out to its max, this is made to its maximum size, then we're going to have an issue with these parts fitting together. So that's what tolerances are. And that's what we'll be talking about. So when we have a tolerance, we have a few different terms to use. We have the, the nominal size, which is a general term for that. So on that example I just gave, the nominal size was half an inch. We also have the basic size, which is the size that the tolerances get applied to, with the actual size um, after they make it. And then we have a minimum clearance space. So on our example here, there was no minimum clearance space because their parts are going to hit together. If they were designed where this was smaller, so let's say like this, and there's going to be some space always in between there, that would be the minimum clearance space between the two parts. So then we have a few different types of tolerances and ways we can show a tolerance. We have a limit tolerance, where we show just the, the smallest and biggest numbers. We have bilaterals, which is what you saw on the title block, where we had same the same tolerance amount in both directions, up and down. We have unilateral, where we have a different number, up or down. And then we have single limits, where we have a minimum or maximum size. So this would be used mainly on fillets or small things that you want to put them in there, but exactly how big it is isn't a real concern. And so that could be identified like that. So how is this used in real life? So here we have a few different dimensions. All of these have the same nominal size of one inch but they don't all have the same basic size. So over here, the basic size is one inch. Um, and on both of these, we'd use the title block tolerances. So these might have different upper and lower limits depending on what it is. Um, if we're using um, our title block, let's see, it'd be plus or minus 0.05. So it wouldn't match the same as these other ones that are plus or minus 0.02. But if the title block on this one had said three places is two thousandths, then it would have the same effect as the rest of, the rest of these. Um, but from the rest of them, so all of these have the same basic effect on the side of the part. It, the, the hole or the shaft, whatever it could be, would have a maximum size or maximum diameter of 1.002 inches and a minimum size of 0.998 inches, um, shown as limits, shown as bilateral, 
and shown as unilater unilateral. On these, though, the basic dimension is changing for each part. So the basic size is changing for each one of these. And so the question is, why do we have so many different ways to show basically the same thing? And the purpose is that when you're the person that's drawing it is giving it to the person that's going to make it, by showing them a different numbers of basic size, they're letting them know, this is the what size I want you to try to get to. And the other size is, is what it can be um, and still be acceptable. So here, the machine is to know, okay, they want to make, the, make it as big as it can be, but it could be smaller. Here they want the minimum size, but if it gets a little bigger, then it's okay. So <clears throat> when we're choosing how we dimension a part, we want to take into account how the tolerances are going to affect each other. So if here we have a value of um, a two-place decimal has a tolerance of th uh, 30 thousandths, we want to find out what the size of this A dimension could be. So let's take a look at that. So how we figure that out, so the maximum size of A, the maximum size of A is going to be First, let's write these. Sorry, I'm doing this with a mouse. It's kind of hard. And so A is going to be basically this one and that one. These dimensions here don't have any effect on the size of A. So to get the maximum size of A, we're going to take the biggest number here and the smallest number there. So we'll put that in, and then we'll get our handy down calculator. So that's 0.18. So the minimum size would be the same thing, So, but opposite. So now we're using the small size of the overall minus the biggest size of that. Um, we can all you can see that that's going to be 0 0.06. So that's the minimum size. So this piece here can change by an eighth of an inch between its maximum and its minimum size. Here we're now we're using a continuous or chain dimensioning. Oh, so now each one of these pieces here actually has an effect on that. So we have our 1.53 again to 1.47. This one's going to be 0.41 to 0 0.35, 0 0.28 to 0 0.22, 0 0.8, oh, uh, 0.78. 0.72. So now we're going to take, to get the maximum size of this, we're going to take the upper value here minus all three of these. So if we have 1.53, 35 minus 0.22 minus 0.72. So we have a maximum size of B could be 0.24. And then the minimum size could be the, the opposite again, minus 0.41 minus 0.28 minus 0.78. So zero. So under these conditions, this piece now is a variation of almost a quarter inch. We have, if this is the minimum size and those are all the maximums, we could have nothing left over for the V dimension. But we could have as much as a quarter inch. So that's how putting dimensions in different spots really affect that leftover piece. And that's why when we dimension, we always have to have that piece that isn't dimensioned 
So that way that's where that, that overflow can go. So if we look at kind of a little animation of this, here I've drawn out the baseline dimensions and their tolerance zones. And I've also drawn out a continuous dimension in their tolerance zones. So as you watch the animation on the next page, look and watch it. On this one, the tolerance zones stay still. On the continuous dimensioning, the tolerance zones move within each other. What we can also see is on this one, the dimension between these could vary more. If this one is all the way to its minimum and this side is all the way to its maximum, then this could have more than the 0 0.03 tolerance uh, show up. So the next thing when we're looking at tolerances is the fit between the two parts that we have. So we have a few different fits. We have a clearance fit, and that's when the hole is always bigger than the shaft. So when we're talking about tolerances, usually we refer to things as holes and shafts. So even on our example here, where we have, this is definitely not a hole, we would still refer to this opening as the hole dimension and the solid piece as the shaft dimension. It just makes the, 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 the terminology easier to work with. So clearance is hole is always bigger than the shaft. Interference means that the hole is always smaller than the shaft. So this is when you want to be able to, to smash things together so that way they stay fixed in the same position. Um, transition fits could be either clearance or interference depending on how they're made. So if the hole is made to its biggest size and the shaft is made to its smallest size, then it's a clearance fit. If the hole is made to its smallest size and the shaft is made to its biggest size, then it could be an interference fit. A line fit is when parts either have they can either have clearance or they can be exactly the same size. So both ANSI and ISO have um, some preferred fits that they use. Um, ANSI has three classifications for theirs. Uh, they have running and sliding, which is meant to allow space for lubrication. And these are abbreviated RC. We have locational fits that are fits between mating parts. And these are abbreviated LC for locational clearance, LT for locational transition, and LN for locational force, N being the, the science notation for force. Um, and so we have force fits, which are our tightest fits, and they're abbreviated FN. It's worth a note that LC fits can be looser or tighter than RC fits. So this is what the fit table looks like um, uh, for these ANSI fits. And so RC1, RC2, RC3, they have the, the classes going across the top. Down the left side, you have the different holes, the, the sizes for the hole. Um, and then you'd basically come over and look at where you were. So if you were doing an RC3 fit at an eighth of an inch, so our basic size is an eighth of an inch. We come over to RC3, and then we look at these numbers. So for the hole, our tolerance is going to be plus 0 .000 five minus zero. So these numbers here are all in uh, thousandths of an inch. So 0.5 here is really five ten thousandths. And so you can see that the hole can start at as low as, as an eighth of an inch, but then go up to 0.1255. The shaft, on the other hand, both of the numbers on it are negative. So it'd be point negative point oh 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 four negative point oh oh seven and so this is how I can show this as um, as a deviation and so on deviation you can see I had both negatives also so here it gives me my limits of clearance so here at the um, on my 
um, my hole, sorry, just blank for a minute. Um, the minimum clearance that I have is four ten thousandths of an inch. So if the hole is at a quarter inch and the shaft is at a quarter inch minus, or, or sorry, an eighth of an inch, the shaft is at an eighth of an inch minus four ten thousandths, I have four ten thousandths clearance. But if the hole is at its biggest size and the shaft is at the smallest size, I have a one point one two thousandths of an inch of clearance. So that's how this works. Um, and on that, notice that the the hole had a minus zero because that's where we're using the hole system. So we have either the hole system system or the shaft system, um, whichever one it is. That's the piece that gets the basic hole size. So you can see that here. Um, when you use the shaft system as if you were getting a ground shaft that you knew was exactly half an inch, um, then you'd want to apply your tolerance to the hole. But usually we apply the tolerance to the hole and then have the shaft be what gets the tolerance. So if we look back here, down here we have some letters and numbers. Those are actually the ISO fits that correspond with the ANSI fits. So in ISO, we have the basic size, which could either be metric or imperial. We have a deviation, which is a letter, and we have a grade. And so when we call it out, we could call out a, a 50H8, or I could call out, in the case of here, an eighth inch H7 F6. Um, so on the whole drawing, I'd put the H7. On the shaft drawing, I'd put the F6. I could also put both of them together. So in my assembly, so I need to figure out what my what my tolerance is to be on this. Inventor has a good tool um, which really matches this chart here, um, and you can find a ton of calculators online to to do ca um, fit calculations. But Inventor has a built-in tool that works pretty good, so that's what I'm going to show here. So I'm going to go to design, power transmission, and then I'm going to come down into the limits and fits calculator. So here I can see the actual size of my part. So if I tell it to be eighth inch, and I want a clearance, and that was an RC3. And so now I can see on the icon, I have my shaft, a picture of my hole, and then the yellow shaded areas are the actual tolerance zone. So I can see that my minimum, my minimum clearance was the four ten thousandths. The maximum was the one point two thousandths. Um, then it's the the F six um, H seven. So I can see that going on here. Um, if I change to more to the, the like that chart I just showed you, I can get to this. So in the in ans or in ISO fits. Um, the, the number is the height of the chart. So if I change to a bigger number, the size of my tolerance zone increases. So if I go all the way up to a 13, you can see that and if I bring that down, the size of that changes. Um, if I change the letter, So if I change the letter here, I get more clearance between the two parts. So if I bring the letter close up to H, now I have a line fit with zero minimum clearance. So the letter is what position it is. If I go to a letter higher than J, now I'm getting my interference fit. So here's the transition, because I depend on where it is in there. Once I get up here, now it's an interference fit. So I can work with that and see those changes. So that's basically how um, they work. If we look at this page here, this gives me my numbers. And so the numbers correspond with different processes that can give that type of, of tolerance repeatedly. Um, so that um, S7, that's high quality turning, broaching, horning. Um, the six is grinding fine boring. So for that hole on the RC3, we'd need to do a fine bore on it. 
for the shaft, we could we could do a, a high quality turn on it probably and still get that that done that done. Um, and so here's again A through G our clearance, H is our line fit, K, M, and N our transitions, and then P to Z are the interference fits. So I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next video.